Uh, it's Thanks six o'clock and I'm going to call the Board of Health meeting to order for Wednesday, October 5th, 2022. Uh, is anyone recording this besides Lake Cam? I see no one. Uh, first thing on the agenda is 22 Pierce Ave discuss re discussion regarding private cemetery for the Leonard family. Anyone here for this? All right. We'll uh, table that for now and go to the next anticipated one, which would be 348 and 350 Bedford Street, meet with Outback Engineering to discuss proposed septic system design, flow changes to Lakeside Landing Plaza to accommodate Red Hand Brewing. Thank you. Um, the floor is yours. All right, thank you. Um, I'm Jim Pavlik with Outback Engineering, and we're here on behalf of uh, the Donnelly family. Uh, Sean Donnelly is with me here. And um, they are looking to uh, make you reuse of the existing uh, building at 348 Bedford Street, which is right next door to the town hall. Yeah. Across from uh, the Asimovsit Pond. Um, it was previously a bank and um, they're looking to open up a new brew pub, Red Hand Brewing. So we have... Um, uh, we looked at the uh, sewage design flows for the existing plaza, it's the Lakeside Landing Plaza, and it was designed uh, in 2018 with a new denitrification septic system that accommodated um, 2,361 gallons a day based on the tenants at that time in 2018. There's been some changes um, in the tenants um, such that uh, the usage is reduced. And um, so we're looking to reallocate the flows for the complex uh, to accommodate up to 48 seats for the tavern. And uh, so we provided information to the board documenting the design flows relative to that. And uh, after having some discussions with Mr. Cullen, um, we talked about separating uh, the brew pub, um, the brewing wastewater from cleaning the, the kegs and so on um, to be uh, discharged to an, uh, a holding tank that would be separate from the um, the septic system flow. So that wastewater would be trucked off site periodically. So um, part of that request is uh, that that holding tank would be uh, within 400 feet of a surface water supply. Um, we're approximately 210 feet from the pond, Aswapasit Pond, uh, with where that holding tank would be proposed. And um, So that's really the request here tonight is really we're just seeking the board's approval. Uh, there's other approvals that we're going to have to get from uh, the Board of Selectmen for liquor licenses and um, from the building inspector for reuse of the building. But uh, this is one of the first steps we're making to request the formal approval from the Board of Health. Uh, I'm good for now. Do you guys have anything? Um, yeah, I just have some questions on it. Um, so it looks like there's an addition at the drive-through. That's going to be for the brewing area. Correct. So left it's going to be the a building area. And just dry storage. Okay. Um, and now, with your notes going back and forth with Ed, I've read a couple pages of them. Um, so there's 48 seats inside, which the system can. Uh, adequately take without increasing the flow. Um, there was also talk about the 20 seats outside for seasonal use for the um, food truck in the parking lot. <coughs> yes. um, and then there'd be an outside bathroom for that 20 seats because the system can't hold that extra 20 seats. Um, right, so we're proposing to have a portable toilet facility outside the building 
Okay. Um, and that, that would accommodate those outdoor seated guests. And then on your plan, you have a proposed outdoor um, venue area with enclosure. Now, it, 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 I'm assuming that's a fence. I mean, that enclosure looks twice the size of the building. It looks like you can put 100 people out there. Is, is that all like fenced in enclosure? I mean, are you taking them 10, 10 parking spots? Looks like a very big enclosure for 20 seats. That's more the stanchions. It's not going to be full fencing. It's just to keep, you know, folks, a designated area for the drinking okay. outside. It's not planning on being full fence. The full fence will be the, um, where the porta potty is, or the outdoor okay. faci bathroom facility, as well as the, uh, uh, the dumpsters. We plan to do eight foot fencing there. Okay. Yep. Something like outdoors, like Trillium does up in Boston, like it's the, kind of like a gathering area, like the Cisco too in New Bedford, okay. kind of thing where they've got they have the rope fencing instead of the kind yeah. of low, but it's a designated area okay. uh, rather than we figured the town wouldn't want eight foot fences all the way around there. Neither would Derek, the owner, probably would appreciate not having massive fencing around, but to designate that area. No, but I understand Derek's question on too, because like you look at um the jockey club in Raynham, they have a fenced in tented area so okay it's just, right it's just look yeah. it, it, it looks very large yeah we were planning on doing umbrellas with some picnic tables kind of thing um maybe a pop-up easy tent you know now there's a band playing but nothing that's fully enclosed out there the food truck going to actually be backed in that area is that where the food truck's still going to yep. be because that's where they are now yep that's the plan and yep okay. so it's going to be an enclosed area to handle all of that outdoor uh, activity so if you want something to eat, you go outside to the food truck. Correct. When it's seasonal. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. sure it's not going to be there year-round. There may be a guitar player. Um, okay. That type okay. of thing. Now, is there going to be a door added from the building on that right-hand side to get there? Are you still going in this front door, and you're going to walk out down the sidewalk and get into that area? How are you getting into that area? There already is a door on the right side already. So it would be the well, over near the tanks. There's a door. Say that again. I'm sorry. Over well, near the septic tanks. There's a door in that. Uh, uh, yeah. There's a small door there. Okay. So yep. that little. There's button. electrical there as well, and there is that a door must there. Be the door. Yep. Yep. Um, do you plan on having uh, like wait staff going out there and waiting on Pete, like as far as uh, waitresses, bartenders? Correct. Yes. Yeah, so you'll still so you probably we haven't figured out all those particulars as far as where, how you're going to order from the food truck, but we would have waiters and waitresses coming out to to the to the tables and taking orders that way. So they'd be bringing beer out through that door That's the out to the right table yep. and going back in and out. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, I, I guess my only concern is um, for those people that are out there for those extra seats, you know, I, I don't really see anybody going to be walking to a plastic porta john with no running water or heat or anything in it instead of going through that door into the bathrooms. Um, I'm just concerned to adding flow to the system with them 20 seats. That was my issue. Uh -huh. Everybody I've talked to. Nobody's going to use it. No one's going to go to a porta potty. You, you know, go inside. Even if you put a sign on the door, please use outside bathrooms. I don't see anybody's going to use Unless you actually put, you know, do you have any idea what type of porta john? They have nice ones with running water in it, mm -hmm. like they have at John Pond Park. Um, I think they might even have heat in it. Um, and then I could actually see people using them. But are you just talking a plastic one you just see? Yeah, I mean, we're looking at more of a higher end one. I guess our thought process was if it's beautiful outside, you're not going to have many people inside, right? That was kind of our thought process. Uh, if it's a beautiful day, you're not going to have 40 people inside. They're going to be outside, and that would be the flow would be, you know, we do have some people that don't want to use an uh, outdoor facility that would come inside. But there are also trailers that we can look at, too, if you guys have a challenge with that. Um, we can certainly look at the Cisco, I think, has one. It's more higher end. They, I don't know if they have heat in it, but they have some running water. But it's just more water and substantial than a plastic, like the one by the old town hall. Right, that's um, what I'm getting. What type? Yeah, 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 like a portable, like a trailer type one. Right. Yeah, they have them, like, yeah, so that's not a problem. It's just, you know, we had designed this with the fencing from previous conversations, but we could certainly look at that trailer. That's not gonna hold us up. If that's gonna be what you guys are looking for, then we could certainly accommodate that. I, I, I just think, that. in my opinion, it's gonna have a lot more people that actually use it. Yeah. Um, and not go in to the mm -hmm. restaurant to use that bathroom. That was one of my concerns was that, would that be just a regular porta potty and not too? being, you mentioned the septic system. We know how much of a nightmare that was for you guys to put in there. And we that yep. would be our main concern. That's what the, the holding tank came into is, I mean, that was a, 
and we, we, we were still down the street there doing our meetings. We were watching yeah, it go in months for, or something. For, yeah, system, yeah. And, and we don't want that to be overused and, and to cause a headache for you guys or anybody, you know what I mean? So I was, I was kind of thinking the same way as if it was a nice one, people would use it. And it would okay. yeah, well, we inspect them out originally as we were doing conversations, so I don't see that being as a problem. Um, I did want to correct one thing though. The food truck is planning on being there year round though, just to let you know. Uh, people, if it's winter time, they'll go out, get their food, or maybe we'll have runners and bring it inside just to eat on paper plates kind of thing is what our thought was. That's so we're on the same page there. Okay, that so is we'll the plan. It might change, but we've been talking to local motion and they have made commitments that they would like to be there year round when we're open the entire time. So we thought that would be a great advantage to all of us. <laughs> and so. it's, it's going to be limited days um, of operation also, right? Yeah, we're only planning on being right now open Wednesday through Sunday. Obviously, Saturday and Sunday will be our, our long days at this point. But we're just, you know, it's hard to tell until we get in there to see the appetite of the locals, of, uh, how busy it's going to be. But that's our plan right now. Okay. Um, I think that was, and obviously, you're going to have to tie in the sinks into that uh, new grease trap. Yes. Nothing is plumbed into that through the building. So you're going to have to jack the floor. And, right. It's currently set up as a bank. So uh, right. we're going to be renovating the interior to accommodate. A bar and uh, the brewing operation. Okay. And Ed, do we know if that tank is tied into the existing septic tank already on the outlet side, or we don't know that? The grease trap or the grease trap to the septic tank? I, I don't think it is tied in now, but you are tying it, right? We, we will. I, from my review of the as built plan, it showed uh, the tank is not plumbed to the inside of the, of the building, but it is connected to Between the septic the tank. But it would be connected. Okay. as part of this renovation. Um, yeah, that makes sense because there was a donut shop proposed before, right? When the, when the system went in. Yeah, they didn't really know what. Yeah, so they, I think they connected. Yeah, coffee there. shop, I think it was at. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. At 24 seats or something, and now a brewery has different seating for coffee shop. Right. Um, and then you're adding some spaces in the parking lot to, to meet the counts. Yes. I mean, what are you short? Two spaces? Is that what they're you waiting? You're requesting? Um, two asterisks on the bottom. Yeah, this. So we're going to be losing uh, 10 spaces by the outdoor uh, venue area. Yeah. And those would be um, uh, put in place uh, in other areas of the parking lot. There's a couple of air. Uh, three areas uh, near the building and then next to the uh, the end of the existing plaza building there's a couple of spaces there so in total we have the total required based on um, the calculations that we show up in the left hand corner <coughs> Okay, and as far as the uh, that tight tank, I don't have any problems with that. It looks like it has an alarm, it's heated, so it doesn't freeze in the winter. Um, it's gonna be above ground setup. Yes, several breweries use the same setup. So. Yeah, it's good to keep that out of the system too. I know Ed had looked into it and it, it, that is very <clears throat> toxic for a septic system. So it's good, it's not going in the system. So I, I think that was my only concern was that outside bathroom. Yeah, yeah, me too. My biggest issue was the porta potty, not just there, because you know the the lakes across the street and our town halls there, and um, you know I know you, it says it's going to put a fence around it, um, but it also makes me wonder if other people want to start expanding their restaurants and say, well, I can't meet my flow. I'll just stick a porta potty out my parking lot. I mean, I'm. I'm a little nervous about setting that precedent, just saying, well, fine, stick a porta. Imagine if a homeowner came in and said, well, I'm at a room over my garage, I'll just put a porta potty next to it, right? We'd all be like, no, you're not doing that, right? But here we're gonna say, you can put a porta potty because you can't meet your flow. So that's, that's, that, other than the fact that it's, you know, it's like right across the street from the lake and next to the town hall. And, you know, I don't want to see it at all, but, I honestly don't think anyone's going to use it. I'm not going to say any names, but somebody that's working with you guys asked me today if I had any problems with it. And I said, you honestly tell me if you're there having a beer, if you're going to go in the porta potty, if you're going to go inside and go to the bathroom. And he's like, I'm going to go inside and go to the bathroom. 
It's like, yeah, and I'm gonna, and my wife's gonna, I bet everybody in here is gonna. So that's, and I know that septic system, I don't know how much it cost, but it was a lot. I'm sure it was. Those trucks were there for a long, long time. So, I mean, <laughs> ultimately, you're the one who got to pay to, if it, you know, if it fails again. Um, but, um, but that's my, my biggest issue with it. I just, you know, I don't like the idea of that, you know, a temporary porta potty be, becoming a permanent thing and us to start making that a normal thing in the town. I just. What if we make it contingent on being a higher end one? Because I think people will be more apt to use that than the other. Yeah, well, something, but I still don't want to see it. I mean, I don't want people driving downtown. Oh, look at the lake. Oh, look at the town hall. Oh, look at the porta potty. Like, I just, I personally don't. I'm one vote, but I just, I don't want to see a, you know, the one thing when they're on construction sites for six months, I just don't think they should stop becoming permanent things around the town. But again, other than that, I have no problem with it. I hope it's, I hope it does well and it's successful. And, you know, odds are that there will be, like they said, when it's nice out, there'll probably be more people outside, not as many inside and vice versa. But, you know, we don't know that if it, if it becomes as successful as I'm sure they want it to be, it's gonna be very busy and get a lot of use, so. Well, we could make like fenced in, higher end contingent. Yeah. If you, too, I mean. And you know the one that jumped on Park, right? You yeah. know the look of that one. Yeah. I'm sure, it doesn't even really look like a Porter John. It yeah. looks like a mobile trailer. Yeah. I mean, like the ones they have it. King Richard's Fair pops to mind. They have those trailers. Yeah. That's what John Park yeah. does. Yeah, I still think there should be a fence around it though. Like, I don't want to. I think it's proposed, and I would yeah, want. I don't want. I don't want to see it. Yeah. Um, and, and did you have anything to add? No, like I said, um, I was mainly concerned with the strength of the wastewater, but they're they're dealing with that with the holding tank. So that was my main concern, and that's taken care of. Okay, and just to your point, Bob. I mean, I understand what everybody else trying to do that with this one. I think. With a food truck, it's kind of a unique uh, circumstance where they don't have any food in here and there's a food truck in the parking lot serving yeah. food. So yeah, it's so kind of, this is- So the, the cooking and cleaning and all that's not being done there. Nothing, so it's less of serving flow no than a regular food. restaurant would be. There's no food at all. Right. There's no kitchen. Nope. Um, we have a few things and for- this Porter John is kind of for the food truck people. Yeah. So if somebody comes to, because you can still pull into the parking lot and just get food from the food truck. It's not like you have to even go into this. Yeah. Um, so that's, it's kind of a unique setup. It's not just like they don't have enough seats, they're serving food inside and they're gonna pull one outside. I, I would agree with you on that one. That would yeah. be, the, you're expanding your capacity, but with a food truck in the parking lot that this is serving, yeah. it's definitely unique. Right. And I think yeah. over time, I mean, the tenants within the plaza are changing and you guys may see your maintenance costs on this whole thing. Maybe it's better to try and find another solution, a more permanent solution, and maybe the, a permanent facility becomes, a, I don't know, some other units yeah, becomes free less, frees up some space from flow, and maybe it shifts around in the building. Because um, uh, I don't think the, the whole complex plaza isn't full right now, is it? I don't think. It is full. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess uh, I'm fine. I don't have anything new to add. You want to ask if any of these people? Oh, have yeah. Does anyone else want to speak to this? Now, I know this vote is just for allowing that tank. Um, do we want to do something contingent with a porta thing, or would it just? I think this would be the last time they were back in front of us. Yeah. All right. So. What do you think? Do you want to make it contingent? Yeah, we should put contingents on this approval that they, whatever you guys, I, I don't really know what you're talking end. about, but yes, whatever you want to say is fine with me. Dude, the, um, the ones that jump on park have running water, correct? Correct. So it'd be one. Um, but they're seasonal. So they wouldn't have one running water in the winter. Right. So they would have to adapt something to make it. Right. And no one's going to be able to the winter. No, one's no um, right. We weren't expecting the, the outdoor facility to be used year round, just seasonal. No, and the food truck people just stop. They usually order ahead, pick up and leave. Yeah. So it's like, right. you figured the, you know, the food truck would still be there year round, but the yeah, nobody's gonna be sitting outside when it's eat. right. That's so exactly. 20 or 30 Get degrees. that removed during winter time and just bring it back in the, you know, spring when it gets warm. 
Um, and most of them plug in with a simple hose. It's not anything that needs to be plumbed or anything like that, even the higher end ones from my investigation. So that's like the one in John Paul Park. Yeah. It's a hose which yeah. works well in the summer. Yeah, they're, they're actually it's, it's, they're really they're pretty good. Like it's, they're it's, nice. It's, it's you know bathroom. you're in a portage. I mean, it's a bathroom. It's mm -hmm. a full yeah. sink bathroom. It's yeah. And I, I think Lisa and you would have customers use it that want buy it. Oh, it's not. Well, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, okay. What is it? Just one. One request on this one. Yeah, it's just the uh, just the whole intake. The whole intake. Variance <clears throat> uh, to the pond. Okay. I make a motion to approve the folding tank at three forty eight Bedford Street. Um, the tank is going to be 210 feet from the pond and 122 feet of watering vegetated wetlands. And the tank is 1,000 gallons. So it's yes. 1,000 gallon holding tank um, of the brew pub. And also that the proposed outdoor uh, toilet for the 20 outside seats um, will have running water uh, and a sink in it to be used uh, for the seasonal outdoor seating and fenced in. Oh. And yeah. fenced in. With like a high enough fence that you can't see it. I think fenced they, in. They propose a fence on there too. So right, so you can meet yeah. each side and yeah. it's blended in. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. I thought everyone was here for that. What's everybody here for? I wasn't aware that you were expecting to have someone representing the property here. I am um, a member of the family. And what oh, we were looking sorry. for was uh -huh. <laughs> what we uh, Usually someone presents. You know, each thing that comes before. Are you the only one here for that, or is everybody else here for that too? Just me. <laughs> just you. I just told that I really wouldn't have to. Uh, that it was that you were going to discuss it, not that. Um, I oh, we would, anything. but usually somebody comes before. Yeah, nobody's I'm sorry, here. I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, no, we're, we're sorry. In the room. We try to get the people out, and we don't make sit around listening to stuff for no reason. So. We, but I guess what we're really looking for is whether or not the planning or the um, board of health would approve um, what we're proposing. Are you going to go back to that question? Sure. So we'll go back to uh, the first item in the agenda, 22 PS Ave, the cemetery site. Um, so I did have some questions. Um, so in the, doing a little bit of research of what's new out there. Um, I heard this green burial process. And um, how do you guys plan, the family plan to be interned there? <laughs> we, we haven't really finalized anything. I would certainly think one of the green plans would be appropriate. What we would like to do is to naturally go back. Uh, we're not talking about fencing or markings or, or anything like that. Um, my husband has um, a deep love for this property and quite frankly I don't think he wants to leave it. Um, it is under a conservation restriction. It can never be subdivided, developed, or, or anything. Um, it will never be sold. Um, and like I said, I just, I just think that he, he would like, I, I, it wouldn't be open to public burials or anything like right. that. Just I mean, be for um, your family. It's just the restriction. Who is, did you sell the restriction, or you just like did you sell it? Does somebody else have the rights to that conservation restriction besides your family? Uh, it's held by Wildlands Trust. Wildlands Trust, and then it's followed up by uh, Audubon. So we have we have a, a line of. Do they have any objections to this? I'm sorry. Do they have any objections to this? Oh, no. Do they have some control over the property? Uh, we have a written agreement, and as long as we abide by that agreement, they're comfortable with whatever we do. And certainly what we're proposing would in no way interfere with with the environmental significance of the property. Right. Yeah, how how big are you looking to make it? I'm sorry? How big? Like for six people or four? Four. 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 <laughs> right now, Just for yeah, four right yeah, now? Yeah. Yeah. More than, okay. than two, but uh, who knows? Uh, there, historically, there was a cemetery on the property. 
centuries ago, but it's disappeared and that's pretty much what we would want to happen with what we do. I've been on for 12 years. I didn't even know we had any control over this. I didn't know we permitted this. Until the last one? <laughs> we had one coming. We that, just was just a, that was just an extension. We added a couple plots yeah. to one cemetery. So this is, you know. Yeah, that's why I looked up a little bit more today because the last one was just an extension, so I wasn't, you know, too worried about it. It wasn't too close to stuff. Yeah, there was looking up the, the green burial type stuff. Mm -hmm. The state is recommending buffers from wells, and I don't think there's a well anywhere near there, but um, any surface waters. Um, and like the wetlands that are shown on this plan um, are a little bit different from what's shown on the town's GIS. Uh, they were a little bit closer. I don't think they're within like the 300 feet, but um, that was just one concern was just that it, it's not going to be affect any surface waters nearby or any ground. We are, we are very environmentally conscious. We would not do anything yeah. that would, would be harmful, believe me. Uh, um, and it would probably have to be marked out somehow. I know, you did, I know you said you didn't want to mark it out, but there has to be like... Oh, well, we would on a plan, certainly. I'm talking about so that anyone walking through yeah. the, the woods would not recognize it as a cemetery. Right, and it would have to be recorded in the deed just to know. I mean, it is restricted. But it would have I'm to sorry, be I'm having difficulty. It would have to be recorded in your deed too. I mean, I know you have a conservation restriction, but you also have to record the deed that you would have that. We will of, do whatever, uh, whatever you need us to do. Um, now that conservation restriction is on the 16 point Four acres that well, it shows. All the conservation the... restriction oh. is on all 102 acres. Both sides of the road. On Both sides of the road. Yes, the the um, house is set up so that it can be set aside so that someone else could actually own or live in the house, but it's still under the conservation <laughs> restriction, and they would still have to agree to everything that's already spelled out in the conservation restriction. Okay, now is the house on this side of the road or is this the barn side? Well, it's... it's Which side? The, the house lot is, would include the barn and the garage. It's a seven acre cutout. Okay, and that's that on the... all under the conservation restriction and it's all one piece of property at this point. Okay, so the proposed cemetery is on the house side of the road. I think it would be on the on the uh, on this the side of the oh, road between uh, Pierce Avenue and and uh, on the south side of the road. Yes, is okay. where this I believe the cemetery would be, the burial would be. Okay. <coughs> I guess seeing it's all in conservation changes. Yeah, for me because now we know it'll never be too. subdivided. It'll never come out up. That's where the old cemetery was too. It was on the the south side of the street. Oh, I'm just unclear. I don't know if Ed has any on the markings. I mean, I, I, I know you don't want to mark, but I think, I don't know if there's anything that... I, I don't know if there's anything that requires a marking. Um, I know there are a lot of um, poor graves that aren't marked. So, I mean, it, it, I don't think there's anything illegal about it. I think it was located on a plan. It didn't really say anything about monumentation or marking. So you don't have Thank to have wrought iron. It's sometimes oh, assumed yeah. because that's that's the way traditionally things have done, but yeah, things are changing. So. Yeah. And I think private cemeteries are different than a public cemetery. A public cemetery, you do have to have more um, fences and stuff like that, whereas a private one, you can put on your on your land, and you don't have to have that. Okay. I'm okay. Yeah, I, I don't I'm good with it. If she says it's protected, if, if Linda says it's protected, it's protected. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody speak to? Uh, anyone else want to speak to this? No? All right. I'll make a motion we approve the uh, cemetery as proposed. For 22 pass out. 22 pass out. Second. More discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. This has to go to the select board as well. Right? I'm sorry? This has to go through the select board as well. Right. Okay. Uh, it went through the cemetery commission. I don't know about the. Yeah. So we give our approval, and then it goes to the select board, and they give the final approval. Okay. We're just looking at the health aspect of it. So oh, you, you still have one more step. Needs to be done. We will do. Okay. okay. 
Thank you. All right, thank you. Good luck. All right, next thing agenda is two Mayflower Road discussed with Michael J. Cosk Associates requested waivers. Uh, for the record, my name is uh, Michael Koska. I'm a registered professional engineer and land surveyor in the Commonwealth of Mass. I'm here representing Michael and Elaine Riley in their endeavor to upgrade their subsurface disposal system at Two Mayflower Road. Um, the previous system on this property, well, the current system, was uh, designed in 1994. Uh, just before the change of Title V, there is a 1,500-gallon tank and a seepage pit with a 2.5-foot um, invert. With the old code, bottom area one gallon per square foot and sidewall at 2.5, it made the three-bedroom home at 330 gallons per day, plus a little bit more, I believe. But with the current code, the factor um, for this type of soil, which is a class one three minute perk rate we achieved, uh, is 0.74 gallons per square foot per day, which makes the system larger because the systems are shallower. In trying to work the system so that one, it meets the three bedroom home, and um, uh, I have the old plan all of the abutting wells were just outside or close to 100 feet from the 1994 system with the uh, well of uh, two mayflower road uh, at uh, i think it was 65 feet on the plan i was able to push the system a little closer to the road and achieve 67 feet so we're here what i'd like to do um, is put in a singular system uh, what it does is it's a denitrification system and with the approval of uh, DEP this system and we're not asking for it here but it can reduce the system size up to 50 percent and I also learned today that you can take a two foot separation to the groundwater table from a Matt Dalton that deals them out of Providence Rhode Island yeah. Um, We've got a few of them. You can do all that. So that being said, I th um, I have a system here in uh, contactors. There's 13 contactors laid in bed formation. And uh, there are the variances that we're talking about uh, is 98 feet from um, a shallow well of William J. Hoffler's property. Um, the radius on the Mark Dubois property is this wells outside of 100 feet. There's a deep well here on property of uh, uh, Jackson and Robbins. Um, the proposed uh, separation would be 96 feet. Here there's a shallow well on property of Brian and Michelle Turgeon. That would be 95 feet. And the uh, well on the property is proposed to be 67 feet. Um, there are a, uh, the system to the north property line is six feet, 10 feet is the minimum. The system to Mayflower Road um, is four feet, which is also a 10, 10 foot minimum. Um, so those are the, the variances that um, for the waivers that I'm asking for. Um, I had a conversation with Ed, and he caught me on a couple of things. One of the things that he brought to my attention was that the top of the system here was within the B horizon. Right now, I am proposing a 7.3 foot sep uh, provided separation and that's even indicated in the in the well at uh, 58.4 uh, by dropping the system three tenths of a foot of that much i can have the whole system in the um uh in the sea horizon 
and uh, I could provide six six point uh, eight feet separation, which is well over the four or five that the board is used to. Um, the other thing, so uh, uh, and thank you for pointing that out to me. So I can revise the plan to drop the system, and it won't affect any of the grades or the um, the piping to uh, from the tank through the D-box to the system. The other thing, I had some on the bottom here, but not in this detail right here. So I can add that detail uh, underneath here, and um, I'm hoping that the board will approve the plan with those waivers and any other things that Ed might have found, I'd be glad to address and um, uh, revise for um, this board and for the applicants. So you said the use of that denitrification system, you can reduce the field, but you didn't? 50%. But you didn't, no. right? No, I can make the three, 330. Um, what the beauty of the <clears throat> contact is, I was there, 7.4 7 .4 feet, they're three foot wide, but in the DEP's approval, they're, all, they're allowing the five feet. So when you do your calculation, um, the number of contact is times 7.4 times five is your um, available area. And then you multiply that by your loading rate, in this case is 0 0.74, because of the three minute per inch per rate that we achieved. So the reason I bring it up is, I mean, if you reduce the field size, right, by 50%? Could you could do that, but it would be a very, very small system. Be tough. I don't know. Yeah. We could get us further away from the well. And I, I don't know if I want to step out on the limb that much. Yeah. Right, it was just a thought. Um, that was one thing I noticed in, in hearing. And other than that, I mean, we get advanced treatment. Um, was there anything you got in? Um, oh, just for the board. He's had his well tested due to the sale. And his well, which is the closest, with the system that's in there currently, which there's a white knight system in there. And I'm not familiar with the white knight system, but everything turned out um, in the uh, well analysis to be uh, within acceptable limits. Uh, the well did pass a, um, um, a test at, uh, I guess, a local laboratory is where it would probably um, you know, be a test. So that system at a regular field is never gonna fail. It's gonna it's going to last forever. So, I mean, what are you going to save? Uh, the only wall you're really close to is your own. Yes. What are you going to save? Uh, two or three feet or four feet to a couple of butters to have it twice the filtration? Uh, I'm fine with leaving it the way it is, to be honest. And which one did you say was had a permit for the new well? Was it this property? Oh, yeah, so well, we were looking in the file, and um, I think when you the old system was put in around 95 they tried to put in a new well or well, someone pulled a permit for a new well in 1997 was that ever put in i have no idea i i've been there 16 years okay okay so you went so yeah so a well uh, someone pulled a permit for a well in 1997 because there was a shallow well there mm -hmm. and it was they pulled it to drill a well and we we're just wondering is there a, the well you have is it like a case drill a well or is it like a old all the one that's with like a concrete tile no i the that well that i have is you know get the pipe coming Steel out of the back yeah. yeah so yeah possibly it was it was drilled in 1997. right the, the person who drilled it or if they did drill it they never submitted the the, the oh. well uh, well logs or anything like that so that they were missing and we just wanted to know if it was actually drilled or not it says on the plan that was done by um S and R land surveying dated uh, three twenty seven ninety five that his well was a shallow well where they actually pulled the water table out of it at uh, fifty eight sixty. Right in in nineteen but, in nineteen ninety five it was a shallow well. Then right in nineteen ninety seven they were going to put in a new well fourteen feet behind it, uh, and we're just trying to figure out if that was actually put in or not. And we actually have the approved permit in the folder mm. for it in ninety seven. Mm. Right, so we're just trying to determine um, if it was put in because it would be a lot safer if, if, it, if, if there was a new well there, you know. So, we're not sure if it is a shallow well. Or you think it do you have a pump in your 
your basement? That Down in the in the well itself. If it's in the well, so it's, it's probably, probably a deep, deep, probably well, a deep well. well. Yeah. So it, yeah. it's got drilled. Yeah. So it's probably, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Shallow yeah. wells, your pumps are in the basement. And they right. cycle. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, this so is... maybe on the as built, you can just show, just locate I, that I will well. investigate. So um, records that. are more accurate. Um, and compare it to this plan again. And if you have any records I, that it was installed. I, I did have to replace the pump at one time, and I think he said it was like 70 feet of... Yeah, so that's a deep okay. feet, somewhere in that range. Uh, yeah, so it's probably, probably Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I know because we had to walk the pipe all the way up to almost the front right. of the property to so a new well get to the foot. I would, I would have to imagine, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. That's probably why it passed too. And yeah. We have no problem with it. Um, <coughs> are you okay, Ed, with lowering it the extra three or four? five inches to get below that B, B layer uh it's a little more than that i believe uh, four I, inches. I when i said that I, ju I just brought it to your attention i wasn't suggesting to lower it um i didn't mention it because it was four feet off the the, the street and there was a five foot over dig but i would rather see like a three foot over dig and keep it where it is um i think the over dig does less than the vertical separation i would rather see vertical separation and less of an over dig uh you don't often see the overdig five feet out being, you know, um, a lot of the F1 doesn't go yeah, that far. And where the field doesn't need to be that big anyway, mm -hmm. so it's already. Yeah, so if you shorten the, shorten yeah. the overdig um, rather than five feet, whatever, two yeah. and a half or three feet, I think that would be a better solution. But if he wants to do that and you guys are okay with it, I'm not going to object to it. If we do the remove and replace, it would be uh, uh, if you subtract the 30 inches on test pit one. Uh, the the A horizon would be at 67.9, the B down at 30 would be 66.4. So this note would be changed that uh, the removal would be to 66.4 and replaced to 66.7. Um, so I can certainly show that and it would probably maybe make a, a I think that it accomplished the same thing, but the system would be a little bit um, higher by about three tenths of a foot. Whatever, yeah. whatever, ple you know, whatever the board thinks is um, better, I don't think that either way it will affect the longevity or the functionality of the system. Yeah. And you're still not getting close to three feet, even lowering it that little bit, you still have like two feet of cover on it. Yeah. Um, and yeah. this is gonna be in a driveway too, correct? Yes. Because I see pavement here, but yeah, not to be over H, the tank. H20 Logan is rec you know i'm recommending and shown with the stone uh packing the um, contact is to achieve that um we also talked uh, i talked to the probable or the potential installer and i suggested that the the tank that this unit comes in naturally um eliminates the 1500 gallon tank but it's not rated for h20 to put some bollards or something something to keep from you know maybe not the owners but a guest comes in doesn't know it's there uh, there's a couple cars drives too far on the grass and all of a sudden the uh the tank is compromised so um uh, there will be something there that will protect uh, a vehicle from going in um from the uh, parking area and going too close and onto the um, singular unit that it's housed in. Okay. Because actually on the single air, that's where your air intake is. It's actually on top of the right tank. Right top, the so middle cover. You drove over it, you <coughs> stop it from yeah. working. Yes, yeah, so even if it was a landscape bed and if you hit a big rock, stick it up there for decorative, yep. but still so nobody can drive on it. Correct. Yeah. Anything. Nobody wants bollards in the front. Yeah. <laughs> right. A, rock or a big be. rock, split rail fence, yeah. uh, a, um, you know, planter, yeah. um, a, tr a tree, a, 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 you know, a small yeah. um, diameter tree, something. And now uh, one question on your detail down to the right, you show separation between your chambers. Um, I'm pretty sure that's just a generic picture you have that? there. Because no. there's no separation between them. They're yeah, actually the touching. There's a, there's, it, it touches in the bottom. Because that gives you width right. of the... I, I think for H20 loading, you're supposed to keep a little separation there because the load um, goes on the stone. So 
on a normal one, you can put them uh, bottom against each other, but when it's H20, if you're going to be driving on them, they they should have a little bit of stone in there, I believe. Yeah, it would be stone in between. But I mean, that would actually make it wider then. That would work because if they're three feet wide and you have um, the dimensions come up just to them to be touching. Yes, it. You can't. The units are three foot wide. From what I've seen them, they're a dome and they have small flaps on the side. Usually all the installations that I've seen, the, the two rows hit each other. Right. But there is room in between them to uh, pack some stone to provide the H20. So, so like I said, you can butt them against yeah. each other, but I don't know if you get the H20 loading on that though. So like I said, it, it's in a typical thing in your backyard. Yeah, you can butt them against each other. There's no issue. You're just throwing soil on top. Mm -hmm. But when you have a vehicle on top, though, you know, because it's whatever, 15 feet wide, it's not the chamber that's taking the load. It's the stone. So you yeah. need that stone between each chamber to, to pick up that load. What it does, it gets transferred out. So you're only transferring it out three feet rather than trying try to transfer out 15 feet because those chambers themselves, they can't take the full load of a vehicle. Mm. So you, if, if it's H20 loading, you do have to put some stone in. Okay. And then we, you're definitely parking on this side of the yard. That's it's, definitely going to be the parking lot. Um, the, the pavement is shows it right where the tank is kind of says paved yeah. area. Uh, no one. You can barely see the pavement, but the pavement <coughs> starts at the travel way here, <coughs> goes up and around, and it kind of comes in, and that's where the uh, cover of the seepage pit is. Then it kind of goes back out again, you know, bumps out towards the uh, front landing and the stairs, and then the, it comes back out again where the cover, uh, the outlet side of the uh, 1500 gallon tank is and then it comes back to the uh, roadway so yes that area has been used for parking and more than likely will because that's the only place that they can well there's park. a back driveway too you know so i guess the question to you ed is um we just have to verify that this design is okay for the h20 loading the way he's presenting it without the stone, because we don't have the width. You, you, the dimension's gonna be off. Right. You, it doesn't it fit. will get a little wider, yeah. If right. you put, so I think it's a, but there's, how many rows was it? Three or four? four. There's one has five. One, two, three, four. And then the, I put one in here to make the 330, and it is 15 feet from the house, so it can, that is um, a crawl space, space in here, so it can be yeah, yeah, close to the, the house. house. Yeah, so if you had to add six inches between every row, you could just push it two feet closer yeah. to the house. Yeah. So yeah, you guys can just, as long as you guys confirm that with Ed, that's good. And you just want to be careful too when they're plowing that they don't pile snow on top of that. Because if you cover those vents, it won't work. So, so whatever you put there, I know snow Make guys sure breathe, just yeah. like to plow right up on top of the yeah. grass. And, yeah. Yeah. And Derek? No. Yeah, there would be some room here. <laughs> there would be some room on the south side of the system for um, snow removal. <clears throat> Hopefully, we don't have a winter like 2015. Uh, is anybody else here for this? No. Oh, the a butter notification cards. Do you want the? Uh, the green cards or a copy of them, or what would you like for your file? We'd like copy green cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we got a copy already. We just have oh, you got that? You I have a copy, but if you have the green cards, that's Absolutely. Good. Thank you. You guys anything else? No, I'm good with it. Me too. So we're going to, um, are we lowering? Are we keeping it the same and going? What, what do we decide? I don't know if we ever decided. He said lower three, I'd want to keep it the same, go with two foot to go. Any... No. Uh, like I said, I, I would prefer to keep it the same elevation. And okay, then, um, then, then we'll do reduce, an, reduce the overdig. We'll do an hour and a half, okay. A two foot? Um, like two you said, foot. Like, okay. Well, acceptable. Yeah. Two front. Okay. 
And now if there is a space required, Ed, when you look into it, this dimension is going right, to get right. wider. Right. So it will get pushed closer to the house. Yeah. So that is our variance to the well is going to change because we're at 67. No. Correct. The, to his well, I don't think it will change much. On it the won't. It, it, it may. I'm going to investigate whether that shallow well was replaced with a drilled well because, yeah. you know, the rumor is that it might be 14 feet beyond, which yeah. makes the, the variance of 67. Um, more more stringent than what it really is so so i guess when you give your waivers give a couple extra feet right, for yeah. the setbacks don't do exactly so 95 or the chain is about six inches apart maybe for the, for the stone it may actually be a foot so i'm not sure maybe a foot i don't know i right. can say if it's six inches it works out to a nice two feet we can just give them a 65 foot 60. to the well instead of 67. but if that's not enough then we should do 60 by 64 or three or something though because i'd rather give it too much and if they decide they don't need it then they don't have to do it but i don't want them to have to come back or that right. give a little to the road i don't know what the size the road will the road will change other walls right you'll be closer uh, sure. to the yeah. neighbors i'd rather just have them move closer yeah, to his especially since well. we think his is far now you guys go with that just knock it down a couple of more feet and him and Ed will, when they go out there, make sure it's, you know, they're keeping it as far as they can. So we're going to ask for a new plan revised, showing the two foot overdig on it, or we're just making notes? Well, we're going to new plan revised because he's going to shift it a little, but you can still approve the waivers for the setbacks okay. um, right. with a new, with not 40 asking, but for a little less than he's asking. Right. Yeah. What my plan is, is to go in tomorrow morning, revise this as per our discussion and immediately get it to it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then our approval will be that it's all set as long as it's okay with the plan. It's, if he feels that it's everything we talked about, then you'll be good to go. Good. I don't want you to have to come back. Okay. Thank so you. maybe on um, 29 Churchill Road, I think if you come out more, you could, that's going to be under 98. So we should change them all by two feet, go 96 on theirs. Yeah. Just so you, you're covered. And if it's coming out a little more, I think that radius is going to change. So 96 feet on which one? Uh, 29 Churchill Road. See so, you how know, that one's at an angle, but if you're coming out, okay, it, it's going to change all those dimensions if we have to add two feet. Yeah, I know, but I, I don't okay. have a plan in front of me, so I'm going to have to go. Yeah, so just it. add <laughs> minus two feet on all the well. Okay, minus two feet on all. Yeah. Okay. With the exception of his, right? Of his, if he needs four feet, give him four feet. Okay. So, yeah, his will go three feet, four feet. Oh, four feet. Okay. As little as they need, but whatever he right. needs for Nike to yeah. so yeah. save pole, and then if they don't need it, then they don't need it. So okay, so 63, 96, 93, and the neighbor's well across the street stays the same because that side will not be moving. And show a two foot overdue. Yeah. Yeah. And leave at the same elevation. You agree? Yep. I can get all that. Straight. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I make a motion to approve the septic repair at 2 Mayflower Road with the six waivers requested. Um, we're going to change three of the waivers. Um, the, the well distance for 2 Mayflower Road is going to be changed to 63 feet. Uh, the well distance on 29 Churchill Road will be changed to 96 feet. And the distance, um, do we have an address on that Bliss Road one? Uh, 32 Bliss Road, the well distance to the septic will be changed to 93 feet. And we will also show a two foot overdig to be done on the system. On the road side, right? Uh, all the way around. All around. All, all around, around two foot overdig. Because it's in the view. Okay. Anything else? I'll second that. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No Great problem. Again. Thank Thanks, you guys. <coughs> uh, next the agenda is 17 Baker Lane. Meet with River Hawk Engineering to discuss requested local upgrade approvals. 
Bounce anymore, you didn't know, break it. No, ruined this whole summer. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. It was I just built a new house with a dock in the back of my house and I fell off the dock like literally <laughs> no higher than this table and yeah. the water and I lost my balance. Somehow really messed up my leg. But anyways, I'm, I'm almost better. So uh for the record, my name is Bob Rigo. I'm with Riverhawk Environmental. Um here tonight and I Sorry, I got held up in the field, so I don't have a board to put up there, but hopefully I have a plan. We all have a plan. plan. Okay, thank you. Um, existing house at 17 Baker Lane. It's existing four bedroom um, dwelling, and it's got a fairly young system in there. I believe in like 2000, uh, maybe, maybe 90, 2006 or something like that, but it hasn't been that long, but anyways, it's, it's failing and we're proposing to um, basically replace the entire system, a new 1500 gallon dual compartment tank, and then um, some plastic chambers and field configuration. I believe uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, 30, uh, 30 chambers in, in field configuration. And we need a, a few variances to, to allow that to happen. There's a drainage well which runs uh, from north to south on the eastern uh, side of the property. That, that drainage whale um, ultimately connects or is a tributary to Long Pond. So we're looking for a few variances that relate to that. One is um, distance of the septic tank to the tributary from 200 feet to uh, 51 feet. And then we're looking for a similar variance for the soil absorption system from 200 feet to 65 feet to the tributary. And then uh, we just did one test hole on that day because of the location of the system. Um, so we're asking just for a variance for, for one hole instead of two. That's basically it. Um, yeah, shouldn't it be one for both tanks, the pump chamber and the tank? Yeah, that was the question. That 51 looks to be to the pump Just tank. The pump chamber. Yeah, there should be. But we should we, have we one why, to the septic what, tank. Also. What we originally had on here, and it's my, I apologize, we were going to reuse the existing septic tank, but it's not a dual compartment tank. So the, the agent instructed us we should probably change it. So we did and didn't pick that up. So yes, we do need a variance also for the, for the um, septic tank. Okay, so that one that you're asking for actually should say pump tank. Pump that, tank, correct. And then yes. we're adding one for the septic tank. That's correct. Do you have yes. a measurement we could give you? Uh, by any chance to vote on? Well, it's actually a pump chamber on the thousand, right? So yeah, but need, on his, we just need this one over On the variance request. The variance is oh, saying okay. septic yeah. tank, but that 51 feet is to the pump tank. Yeah. So he, that note is wrong. Yeah, he caught pump tank up on the drawer and he just missed correct. it on the word. And, Yes. And then so does variance. anybody get a rule or what do we need for the I tank? Think, oh, Chris, Chris is on it. Uh, so give him a couple extra feet. Yeah. 180. Is it 20? This can't be right. No. What's it, what scale? Like if that's 51, 6, I can't. It's a 20 scale. Right. Hold on. 50 times 10. Yeah. It should be around 70, 4 feet. 60. 53 ish. It's way more than 53. 63. 63. 63. Yeah, 63 seems about right. Which means the wrong numbers. 50. How wide is the tank? The tank's 10 feet. No, tank's if you want, uh, can, can I use so this, scale? So this is that'll be on me. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. So there's 68 just to this. It's 51 plus 7. Well, the, just to that side of the tank. The, the edge of the. You to come over all that one. It's another 10 feet, probably. Yeah. yeah. The edge of the, the yeah. bank. Gets closer. That's why yeah. I was sure. Oh, okay. Right. Right. I was trying yeah. to go perpendicular. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Comes in on it. Uh, all right. Yeah, I was reading the wrong number the first time. Well, we'd rather give them more variance than go to sixty. It doesn't. Yeah. 
make it 60. Yeah, 63, but 60 would be great. Yeah. In that case way. it's moved a little right. bit, it doesn't. It's it's not a, the it's pipe not comes out a little different well, spot, well, and you want to line up directly to the pipe. I don't want to put a bend yeah. in it because you don't have enough variance. Yeah, and I'm, this was new to me that that swale up there was a tributary. Yeah, you know, it's three miles in the pond. It is an outreach. We, out yeah, it is, believe it or not, it is. Yeah, it's a tributary to Long Pond, and then yeah, because it ends up yep. going to Fall Brook, right? Fall Brook is a tributary. Now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that swale runs through the entire neighborhood, like perpendicular. It's kind yeah. of funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was the only thing I noticed. Um, you guys had anything else? I'm good. No, on it. Yeah, on this one's... Okay. I'm good. Anybody else here to speak to this? I'm good, Brenner. I only got like a half of one I'm working right now, so <laughs> I'm relying on Derek to do all the, 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 uh, the reading tonight. Okay. I make a motion to approve the septic repair at 17 Baker Lane. Um, there's going to be four requested variances. Um, variance number one needs to be changed. Uh, to say requires the pump tank to be 200 feet away from the tributary. Uh, surface water supply from 251. And we have to add a note that requests um, pretty much the same wording. Local operator approval from 310 CMR 15 to 11 of Title V, which requires a septic tank to be 200 feet away from the tributary, <coughs> tributary to a surface water supply, a reduction from 200 to 60 feet is requested. Yeah. Uh, and then the other Do two. Do you have to say to the bank of the swale or just to the, to the? It just says to the tributary. Okay. And then that tributary is mine. Yeah, yeah. They, get, they get the bank. I would say the, tributary because it is a little vague of where that, okay. that, where that happens, but. Okay. And then the other two uh, local requests uh, to approve the system to be 200 from a tributary wash water supply to be 200 to 65 feet. And the last request requires minimum of two deep hole observations uh, to one. Good. I'll second that. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Bob. Thanks. You're going to submit a new plan showing those, obviously, with the new, with the added variance? Uh, just a letter. Well, just a letter. Yeah. Door on a plane, so, okay. so it's clear and okay. no problem. Okay. We'll get this thank you very All right, much. Thank you. Everybody. Just wait for that clock to come back. Next on the agenda is <coughs> 7 Azalea Street, discuss nitrogen loading with Zenith Consulting Engineers. Good evening. Uh, for the record, now Zega from Zenith. Uh, thanks for uh, having the informal meeting with me. Uh, I requested it with Ed when I, um, after we had our submittal. Um, so just to give you a little bit of a background, um, currently it is a vacant piece of property um, it doesn't have a home on it. It's approximately 10,000, just over 10,000 square feet, 10,361 square feet to be exact. Um, it, um, like I said, 
Uh, it doesn't have anything on it other than a well. There is an existing well, uh, which we will be looking to decommission. Um, it was it was actually servicing um, an abutting property, um, and that property has since been tied into the uh, public water supplies uh, area, uh, the, the uh, water main. So that is being going to be completely decommissioned. Um, so what we're doing is we're proposing a uh, 34 by 26 home, uh, single family home with a uh, septic system, uh, as you can see, leaching trenches, um, as well as tying in the water service to the um, water, you know, to the water main on, out on Azalea Street. Um, so the issue came uh, to light after we submitted uh, that Ed, uh, your agent had a concern regarding nitrogen loading. Um, and at first I, you know, I questioned him on it and um, basically wanted to get his insight as to, as to why <clears throat> I was a little confused. Um, my understanding has always been, and I'll read through the regulation, but my understanding has always been if you have, uh, you know, you're tied into water and you're tied into, you, you are not within a zone two or an IWPA, a terminal head protection area. Um, you are not in a nitrogen sensitive area. Um, and therefore you do not need to meet the one bedroom per 10,000 square feet uh, for a minimum of three bedrooms. Um, in this case, if that were the case, we would need a 30,000 square foot minimum uh, lot. Um, so I'll read the regulation. Uh, I come to find out, excuse me, come to find out, I believe what the, con the major, con the main concern is, is that um, although there, we are not in a zone two, we are not in an uh, interim well head protection area, and we are tied into the water, um, which in my opinion means, means that we do not need to meet that uh, standard. Um, Ed's concern uh, is that there are abutting private wells uh, that impact the lot uh, and would be considered nitrogen sensitive areas. Um, so, it, you know, so I would, you know, he and I went back and forth on it, and I'll obviously I'll let him, you know, say his piece as well. But when I read when I read this, and I'll read it to the to the board, um, it says no system uh, serving. It, it, I, I'm skipping a little bit here, but no system serving new construction in areas where the use of both on-site systems and drinking water supply wells is proposed to serve the facility shall be designed to receive or shall receive more than 440 gallons of de uh, design flow per day per acre. Uh, residential uses except as set forth in Steer 310 CMI 15216 aggregate flows uh, um, for an enhanced nitrogen. So what they're basically talking about is if you do an advanced treatment system, but that would still not even make this comply because you, you wouldn't be able to meet the, the three bedrooms on a site this size. Um, the way I read that is if you are proposing on your lot, you, you are a well and a, and a septic, then you need to meet that requirement. There's nothing that I read in there that tells me, um, that tells me that because it is an abutting well, that I need to meet that requirement. Um, so I know that Ed obviously was going to uh, talk about it as well. Um, and I know that there was some discussion whether or not DEP was going to get, uh, you know, get any feedback from DEP. Um, so I, I guess I'm just going to leave it in, in your hands at this point. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I don't have anyone just going with that or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just to see what. Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> now I've read the interpretation of it and um, my interpretation of it is different. I mean, I respect Niall's opinion, but um, the very beginning, it says no system serving new construction in areas. And areas is a key word for me. It doesn't say in lots, it's in areas, because I think the intent of this regulation was to prevent too much nitrogen going into the ground um, by, you know, so if you had a small lot, you had to have fewer bedrooms. And that was the, the idea to regulate the number of bedrooms per square foot. Um, now, what DP refers to these, um, also in the nitrogen aggregation plan, they say areas of new residential new construction as defined in Title V or both on-site system and on-site figure wells are proposed. These areas are so-called private well areas. So basically they're areas with private wells, which is most of Lakeville. Um, now, 
there are areas in Lakeville that are on water, if they're on Taunton water or Middle Bell water, and that this does not apply. I completely agree with Niall in those areas. Um, but to say that Clark Shores area is not a private well area when there's over 170 private wells, that's the part I have a problem with. Like I said, in like off um, where Taunton water is, like um, we did Oldfield Estates not here, in fact, you guys did it, you know, and that did not meet the 440 gallons per day. But everyone was tied in, the, part, the, the lot next door was tied in. Um, I think there was the, the property behind it was the hospital property, so there was no uh, residence there. So I didn't apply that to this one. I didn't apply the 440 because I didn't think that applied at all. Because like I said, in that area, most people who build a house are gonna hook into water, so it's not an issue. Clack Shores is just a unique situation, whereas, okay, you have water, but there are a lot of people, a lot of residents there who do not want to hook into the water system, um, which is unfortunate because that area probably has the highest amount of nitrogen in all of Lakeville. It has the most private wells in all of Lakeville and it has some of the highest nitrogen because there's so many, it has the most septic system per square foot in all of Lakeville. And like I said, so if we're not gonna apply this regulation here, where would we apply it? This is the most sensitive area in all of Lakeville for me. And so that's why I think we, we should apply this because in my in the way I read it, when you say area, you're referring to many lots. Um, you're not referring to one lot. If it's a, if they meant, you know, um, you know, new construction in lots, they would have said new construction in lots, but they didn't. They said areas, and just as they call them nitrogen sensitive areas, private well areas, in term in term wellhead protection areas, these aren't lots. These are all multiple lots but they fall under one area. That's usually what DEP refers to when they refer to uh, multiple lots or anything like a nitrogen sensitive area, they call them areas. Um, so to say that area is just applies to one lots, that's where my disagreement comes with Niles. And I have a question and it says um, under number three, under the nitrogen loading limitations, um, it shall be the duty of the owner of the system or proposed system to ascertain whether the whether or not the facility to be constructed will be in a nitrogen sensitive area. The department will prepare and make available at locations generally accessible to the public maps portraying designated nitrogen sensitive areas within the Commonwealth. Is this a mapped nitrogen sensitive area in the Commonwealth? That was one of my questions. Most of Lakeville, like I said, would be considered a private well area. They do not map private well areas, no. They map uh, interim wellhead protection areas, which is what they're referring to. So this... and, and they map um, surface water protection areas, uh, but they do not map private wells areas because you would have to find out where all the private wells are. So like I said, it's, it's not mapped by DEP. DEP does map certain things, but they don't map private well areas, even though they do consider that to be a nitrogen sensitive area. Okay, so that wouldn't apply. Right, that was my question. Did that say map nitrogen sensitive or private well? It's just under the nitrogen loading limitations. I wonder if there's a new GIS layer that covers nitrogen sensitive, which I don't know. I mean, you would have it's to like map every prior layer. well. That'd be kind of crazy. And, and, and that's just not possible. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I, I guess another question was um, under this, it says Aura. Um, Enhanced nitrogen removal under fifteen two one seven. Um, so, would to get under the clean drinking of ten pots per million? I mean, is a treatment system an option on any of these lots? That yeah, that's that's what to he get kind under of the ten to. pots per million. Yeah. And and that's what he kind of referred to. But on this lot, it would be difficult. But in general, yeah, if you have a thirty thousand square foot lot and you want to put a four bedroom, you could put um, a uh, like a uh, fast system or the singular system that we saw there. And that way you can get your four bedrooms, even though you have 30,000 square feet, that's what that um, regulation is for. Um, but like I said, when it's only 10,000, um, it's, it's not enough to get a three bedroom system in there one, on only a 10,000 square foot lot. No, so basically it's 10,000 per bedroom. So by, he could put a one bedroom in there by right. And then like I said, if he, he put a nitrogen, um, denitrification system, he could possibly increase that, whether he could double it from one to two, 
um, that that would be a question. Yeah, I don't think, think it. I don't yeah. think it gets you there. Yeah. It's about one and a half. So you, I think the rule of thumb is if it, if you're at four forty, it gets you up to six sixty. So it's about one and a half. So it wouldn't get you the two. So even with any type of treatment, not even a bottom of sand doesn't give you. No, that's the same. It's still a treatment. That the bottom of sand is just the type of system, but the the other the treatment is still the same um, as far as the approval goes. That's a whole other conversation too. When we're talking about new construction and advanced treatment, <laughs> uh, oh. which we've been down that road once. Well, I mean, I've talked to a bunch of people, two lawyers. I don't know if currently, you know, it's probably good to ask DEP because I don't know if that interpretation is how it's being interpreted. I do know like Middleborough, um, not through zoning, but by the Board of Health reg, they just said no septics and lots under 20,000 square feet for public health. Um, you know, the, these rules and zoning rules were all meant for like back in the day when you could have a half acre or three quarter acre lot and they were regular building lots. The Shores was a specific place. We don't have 5,000 square foot lots anywhere else in the town. They were never intended and it was because they were gonna be seasonal and year round and used a few months of a year. At the time, I'm guessing that's why they said, yeah, you can put little cottages in 5,000 square foot lots or 10,000 or seven, whatever is down there. And so we're interpreting what might have been meant at the time for like when we had three quarter acre lots before we went to an acre and three quarter, you know, that was a buildable lot. So that, you know, so, but I don't know if legally, um, it, it kind of, two lawyers have told me it would kind of be up to DEP, but I, I, I think Niles on this one might be right because we don't, our rig doesn't spell it out that way because our rig says a well and a, septic and so i don't know the interpretation on this one if we'd win or lose but i think we should honestly look at doing something like middleborough did going forward because as they run more and more water down there i mean i don't we we i've been on this board 12 years and we've done a lot to clean up a lot of the systems down there the pipes that were running right into the lake um we had people from my dep and the old area uh, Charlie Kanicki and stuff come down for days. We paid them to come down here and, and focus down um, down there to try to come up with the best solution. And now that we're finally making some ground to start saying everywhere they run a water line, people can start throwing three bedroom houses on 10,000 square foot lots. I mean, the common sense is what Ed's saying that that's not the intent to put all that nitrogen and any more nitrogen in there than, than needs to be there. But I just, I don't know the legal question of it. And it's two lawyers have told me that they would probably have DEP, um, you know, tell us because it's their reg that we're, so what's their interpretation of that reg? Are they interpreting like Ed that says the area, which, which makes sense to me, or is their interpretation on a lot, which. Um, and I, I lean towards Ed's interpretation too, because of, because of this, in this neighborhood, we all know the history there of like how much septics are just piled in, into that area with the wetlands and the high water table and all the other stuff. It just on the lake contamination and everything else. I mean, yeah, because there's like a lot of lots. Yeah, I think there's like sixty or seventy of them. I, I don't want sixty or seventy. You know, if they combine some and they get some more area, I'm all for that. Um, not to say names, but we only know it, what Louis did down there, taking all those lots, combining them and putting a few nice houses. I mean, that stuff to me was like a home run down there. Didn't add a bedroom, um, took the amount of bedrooms that was already there, yeah, which is totally subjects. different. Here there's none. There there was, took how many bedrooms there were and configured the lots, different sizes and houses to make it all work. Um, I mean, but I don't know. I mean, depending on what DEP says, if they, if they say Niles' interpretation is correct, I think we got to approve this and maybe look at making our own right. But if they say absolutely not, it's right, then. Um, so I would really, it's their right. So I can tell you the history and anything we've passed for 12 years here on the Board of Health, what I'm thinking behind it was, but I can't tell you what they were thinking when they, when they wrote that. Um, 
I did reach out to DEP and I, um, in fact, I called them just before the meeting and um, I asked them to send me an email and they just said, we're still looking into it. Yeah. So they really haven't given us an answer. Uh, I, I would have told you earlier, but like I said, I, I didn't get an answer. I called them at like 4.30 and then just, uh, and then so they just yeah. said, look, we, we're looking into it. <laughs> But apparently they're looking into different departments as well. So it's not, they don't want to make a decision in the Southeast region and be different than the Northeast region. So they have to be uniform and to do that, it takes more time. So oh, sounds familiar. Oh yeah. Oh, when they got involved in this, he was shocked that like when Charlie came down and they was asking him all these questions and stuff. And, and he they couldn't believe on the building code they tell you how many nails an inch on a corner board or something like you can ask anything and if you ask them a question and there's no answer for it it goes through the ashburton place and they send out their decision to every building department in the state so everybody knows now that question's answered and he's like and you guys are calling up about drinking wells and nobody will give you even guidance forget give you his answer they're leaving you guys out on your own and it's it's really it's a moving target at times, I think, because of well, it, from administration to administration and from, you know, yeah. housing crisis to housing crisis or whatever's going on. And, so, and this is a difficult question, you know, like, I mean, the, like I said, there are, there are dozens of different interpretations of where it is. Like I said, I gave one example where it's not an issue and, and Niles is right, you know, that, that wouldn't apply in that area. But in, in this area, like I said, it's Clark Shore is unique and one of the most sensitive and it's sensitive for another reason. One, one, because there's so many septics and there's so many private wells, but also honestly, it's, it's a lower income area. And this area, they don't test their water as often as other people do. And, you know, whereas other people say, okay, I'll just throw a $3,000 system, drinking water system on. A lot of people in Clark Shores don't do that because they don't have the money to do it. So it is one of the more vulnerable populations in all of Lakeville. And like I said, other people just drink bottled water. They don't care. It, when you don't have a big income, you don't drink bottled water all the time. So it, to but, me, it's, it's many things. It's, a lot of the problem too is if, if this was Taunton and New Bedford and we had a water department, we could say, we could make people hook up and, and mm -hmm. put it on their taxes. Like we could go into a neighborhood like that and make every single person hook up and we wouldn't have any problems. But I mean, this whole water system went around us too. Then none of that came before us. They didn't ask us questions. They just went and approved that for private people to charge whatever they want for people down there. And now they haven't even done half of what they said they were going to do. And it's, uh, you know, they, you know, DEP is part of the reason that it's, it's in some areas, it's worse than it was before. Because, you know, because you get that thing, you can, if one house, I mean, on 10,000 square foot lots or 7,000, one house doesn't want to hook up and they still got a well there, that just killed the whole neighborhoods. Well, that's my question. I guess that's what I wanted to bring up next is, you know, moving forward, obviously we need to still get some more clarification, but if this one's not tied in the water, this guy's tied in the water, I'm tied in the water, the guy across the street's on a well, mm -hmm. are we now considering that an issue? Um, I know there's not a lot of these situations left. I get it, um, but there are. Still, I'm sure there's still some. Um, you know, does that because that one guy has a well, does that ruin his buildability because he just doesn't want to? Exactly. Tie that's the problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a that's a big problem moving forward. So it's yeah, you know, and, that, and that's why cities can do that. Cities can go in and tell everybody you're hooking up, yeah. like it or not, you're hooking up to the water, and then all those headaches go away. But they can't in the way that they did that. I mean, we tried putting input. We tried asking them to put stuff in their regs for when they were running that private water when we found out about it. We had some meetings and they didn't adopt any of it and we couldn't make them. There was nothing. They were supposed to still allow uh, seasonal water shutoffs for the people who didn't want to pay all year long and have to do all that stuff. They just turn on their shallow lines. They didn't, they didn't incorporate anything we asked them to do, knowing that here we are a few years later, and where does it end back up right here? And we didn't cause it. We tried having, being proactive and giving solutions and they just went right around us and made the mess a bigger headache than, than was existing. Um, because yeah, those houses, you know, there are, there are communities that have seasonal restrictions on the houses, but cause they had wells and stuff. Well, down there, they never had to have them cause they didn't have year round water. 
So even though it was always seasonal since it was built because they didn't have year-round water, right? So it was just, they were seasonal because if you don't have portable water all year, then it's not a year-round house. Mm -hmm. But now they started running these lines down and then and these were all the things we brought up to DEP and to the association people when they were setting it up and um, DEP permitted that and they just went right around us. They, they, they really didn't incorporate, I don't think a single thing we asked them to do on that. And, uh, but now when there's a problem, right, we can't get an answer out of them, but you know, now they're gonna dump it back on us to tell us, well, you guys figure out how to fix our mess. So. Um, so I guess I'll refer that question back to Ed as far as your interpretation of it. I mean, like you said, if all houses around a property they're trying to do this on is tied in for, to pick, pick a number, 100 feet, 200 feet, 300 feet, does that make that one not the nitrogen sensitive area? Or, or do you feel it's just all of Clark Shores, no matter who's tied in where, would no, be? It, would, it, it wouldn't be all of Clark Shores, no. But like I said, um, given the location of this one, where it's at the top of Clark Shores and the effluent is going down through probably over a hundred lots. I mean, there's over 300 lots in Clark Shores. And you know, this is probably gonna hit, well, maybe not hundred, but like 60 or 70 of them. So you're gonna hit a lot of wells. So it's not just, it's just not one or two, you know, in a situation like that. If it was one or two, I mean, okay, the person throws on a nitrogen, um, throws on a filter on, on their system or something like that. And you can kind of monitor it in some way. But when it's this many, I mean, the, the, based on the location, since it's so high up on the hill and it's going down, it's gonna affect so many, there's no way we can monitor all those, um, like I said, if there were just one or two, like I said. And like I said, it, it's really a case by case basis. On in the other case, I said, okay, yeah, it's not it's not a, a health risk. But I'll bet if you did, if you took the area of, of, of the, the whole community and divided it up by how many bedrooms there. I bet we get 10,000 a bedroom. I bet there's only a couple of thousand a bedroom at that. There's so many bedrooms and there's so much yeah. flow going into that one area. So then on that side, that makes its point. Like there's, there's, a, there's acres of land that has 10 times nitrogen loading already happening into it. Why should we add any more? But on the flip side, if there's no law that says we can't let them do it, then like I'm saying on this one, we might, they might say, well, you guys don't have your own rig, so on this one, you just have to do it. And then we should consider making our own rig somewhat of Middleborough's or something. So, um, well, I mean, we're, we're not actually approving it today. We're no, discussing it, yeah, it discussing. whether it applies and goes to DEP. So you yeah. could just say, okay, have let DEP decide and throw it to them. And they would just have to do an aggregate, aggregation plan and bring present it to DEP. And that way DEP can say, okay, you know, we think it's okay or something like that, you know. Or basically, you know, whatever, you can get two bedrooms if you're throwing a fast system, whatever, but you would leave that up to DEP rather than us, you know, because that's that's the normal process you would go through. We would come through us, we would give approval, and then you would go to DEP for our approval as well, so. I want to open up and see if anyone else wants to speak to it. So what that name? My name's Anthony Silva, I live at 5 Sailor Street. You guys got a new position here with us. In 1987, I owned two Barbary Street. When I put the well in across the street, we broke up with my fiance. The well was never even inspected. I signed a paper that those lots wouldn't be divided when I converted it into year round residency. What people do in Clark Shores is they buy small pieces of property, they come for variances, they put houses and they make the money and they run. Oh, yeah. The nitrogen load is so large at Clark Shores that if you go down to the boat ramp with your bare feet, you can literally step in septic water. Okay? Um, you know, I sat here and I listened. One of the things about the outside toilet that you approved, which is nice and fine, how many people from Clark Shores do you think will visit that twice a day? I can name names, but I'm not going. I really don't want to see a house next door. The public water system or the private water system they installed probably will end up failing. Yeah, it's nothing but complaints on Facebook. It's, oh, yeah. um, you know, maybe, I don't know the exact details. There's other people who do. Yeah. Um, I don't want to see nothing there. I picked that house and I moved in there 
Tina Melanson by Landlaw. Um, it's one of the few houses with a buffer beside me. It's one of the few lots without abandoned cars and vehicles. I know you gentlemen from the Board of Health, so I know you know about Clark Shore Nation. Um, today, as we speak, dumpsters arrived on uh, Violet Street. There's work being done. Kitzel's old house has been worked on for 20 years. There's no plumbing, no toilet, no water. My neighbor Kenny's lived in there now for 10 years. There's literally no water and literally not a porcelain toilet or bowl. It's really out of control and at some times I expected the town to do something for the neighborhood. I think some people in the neighborhood feel that the neighborhood's the way it is because of the town's willingness not to straighten it out. If you were to force people to do their water tests once a year like they're supposed to, you would find that 80% of the wells fail. All right. So a lot of what you say, I mean, yeah, we know the history of what's going on down there, but you know, we're limited to a degree. We can't go in there and force force people to do things that on their own land, right? You can't make no, someone I, water I, test I, the water if they don't want to. It's their well. It's their choice not to test it. You know, I'm 57 years old. This is the first time I've ever came to a town meeting, and maybe because I'm a button neighbor now. Uh, other than something for myself, when 1987, I went through quite a bit. I think I bought three lots there in order to convert to Bayberry into a year-round residency. Um, Tina and Steve never bought the adjoining lots which they could have years ago for four, five, seven thousand because everybody was under the that they were nothing but a tax debt that nothing could be done with. And now in the year 2022, somebody wants to put a three bedroom house on a lot that's how big? 10,000 yeah. 10, feet. Um, well, you gentlemen couldn't even get. You, you, we have three bedroom houses in the shores that are occupied by two or three people per bedroom. So you, that's kind of what I'm getting at too, though, is you're not telling us anything we don't already know. Like okay, two, of us, two of us grew up in town, so we yeah. know the no, history. No, I understand you. My name is Kyle. Uh, I'm the homeowner next door to Seven's area at 11's area, right? I'm just on the other side. And that lot that they're trying to build on right now is two blocks. We don't get, you know, if you guys are year-round uh, uh, lifetime residents, Clark Shaw said that we don't have a storm drainage system. I'm a drain guy. I know storm. I know drain. I work for Bay State. I, I've been around. Um, we don't have a drainage system. Four streets, two blocks. I don't know how many houses are on those two blocks right there. All drain right into that lot. They go all downhill at that point. So if you put something and you start building up, you're going to put all the other houses underwater right around, right? So how are we going to go with that drainage? Also, my well is in my driveway about 15 feet off that property line. Would you put a septic system in there and then move into my house and give your kids that water? Because I have a single father. And that was my only option in the year 2021 when everybody was making all that money in real estate. It was only $300,000 I could find for my kids. In. Nope. And I love being a part of the shores. I love being a resident down there. And we don't want to see these everything that's happening everywhere else. Three bedroom houses go up in your backyard. You know? We don't want, we just don't you don't want to see that. And like I said, it's a go take a ride over there and look at that lot. You can if you stand in that lot and you look in all directions, the streets drain and hatch you every day. Stand there in the storm and watch that place turn into a swamp. And I had to, I put eight gum trucks of dirt in my backyard to deter the water from flooding out my side. And I'm up the hill from that lot. So I can only imagine if I don't have the money to keep up with a contractor just filling the lot up to make sure that the lot is not on his lot and it goes to mine. I don't have the money to keep up with that. Like I said, I, I'm a single guy and, 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 and I got two kids that live with me. And I just don't have the money to keep up with a, a contractor building a house and burying me under water. And I, and I, a hundred percent, I hope I came across that way. I agree with you guys. And, and part of my frustration was, is that and when you were told nobody could ever build there, they couldn't because there was no water. When DEP let them put those wells in and that mess of a water supply they made, that changed, that changed the, the rules. And in, uh, if you go back and listen to the meetings, I was on the board when that was going on. And I said, meeting after meeting after meeting this is exactly what's going to start happening you put water in there now you don't have to have the setbacks and now people are going to try to start doing more and more down there and i brought that guy charlie kanicki down and drove him around there 
and there's like there's these quick hits and people some of the houses I see online, people are going down there now and they got water and they're throwing a coat of paint on them and they're putting new wall plates and calling them renovated and selling them to people that have no idea what they're buying. Well, it, and the it's, only yeah, and it's, and the stuff that's going on and it's, you know, like I said, I mean, if you guys know the area that Louie did, I don't know if you're for or against mm -hmm. that, but that came out to be a nice little neighborhood. And if people do that, I'm all for it, but just, just now it's starting just to take every little tiny lockdown, lockdown there. You can't put a house, like the footprint of a person in another set of cars, yeah. plowing in the winter, et cetera. Oh, like yeah. The footprint of a family, a three bedroom. Yeah. I imagine you get a three bedroom and you're going to have somebody with four to five kids in there. It's not going to be one kid per. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? It's going to be a six a six person family. Oh, yeah. Especially with inflation in our economy right now. It's not it's not like a single guy buying that house back in his boat. So, 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 so this is also just a discussion, too. There's right. nothing, yeah, there's I, no I, votes tonight. And, and you just don't uh, want to get too far off to it. And right. we'll let one, one more person right. speak to. Yeah, yeah, I've lived on Violet Street for 35 years. I have a well within probably 125 feet of this lot, two across the way. I don't want my well to be poisoned. I don't want to have to hook up to the water system at $160 a month. Yeah. That's what it is now, because I own the, the lot next to that in Five Azalea, and I pay for the water there, and it's $160 a month now. And it's, uh, it's doomed to fail. Oh, yeah. when, when that does fail, the only place I have to drill a well is right on the corner of my lot next to that. Because I have 15,000, 16,000 square feet. But because of the septic systems, that is the only place I will be able to drill a well. You know, and and the charge is all the same amount. You could use yeah. 10 gallons a year and stay there for months. You could use 1,000 every month. Right. And nobody will look up to it. They won't price. put meters on them. They won't do anything. Like that. You know, minimum acreage for any new building in the town, and but at ten thousand square feet, it, it's really a very small lot, and everything drains into there. You get down there, you can see where the, the canal is cuts right through the middle of the lot, and like like Kenny said, everything drains that way. If you go and look, you can see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally I will all agree with it today. One way. And my house yeah. is, has a cellar, a basement, a full basement next to it. It's one of the ones up there that actually has a full basement. And all the water that goes to his lot is going to be in my basement yeah. if he, when they build that lot up. Yeah, uh, so I, I am concerned about the size of the lot, my well being poisoned, the, the loading thing, and uh, it's going to open a can of worms in that neighborhood like you've never seen, Mr. Pooch. Oh, I agree. Because <laughs> I, mean, I own two of those lots can myself. Can one thing about this is the cottages you know, starting to go year round. That's when the whole can of worms really yeah. opened. This, is, this has been going on for 50, 60 years. I see so. them in their cars in the winter because they're freezing because nobody pulls building permits. And they're in their houses and they're so cold they can't get warm. They're sitting in the cars in my neighborhood with their kids to stay warm. And in the summer they're roasting. Because they don't do anything to cold. Any of these houses, when they turn them and burn them, yeah. nobody's going to do that. Two of them going around on my street right now on Violet Street. There's two, two contractors there doing the turn and burn. Not a building permit to be seen. And it's uh, the people that buy those houses will be freezing in the in the winter and hot in the summer and like no no permits, no regulation. And, and half the time, the septic systems don't get done either because they pay cash for them and they turn them. And it's two years, two years, two years. Oh, yeah. You know they they use that two years all the time. The time. So in the past, mm -hmm. the, so the, the town did try to, to, to start, I don't know, it was a different board, but they were sued by the neighborhood wow. yeah. for discrimination. I just want to say because people were pointing out things and they didn't like the way it was being pointed out. Right? Right. So yeah. my septic tank comes out of the back of my house, which is a, about the same grade of level as where they want to build this house. But like I told you, I put in a bunch of dirt on the other side. Long and short is. Whoever, whenever they had to redo my septic, they made they made you guys whatever wood it was, made them put in the pump chamber and pump it up the hill next to my house and up into my front yard, which my septic sits probably five to ten feet higher um, than what he's proposing to build right now. So wouldn't he have to raise this to match what you guys made to leach? Mine had to leach obviously five to ten. There was a reason it had to get pumped up the hill, right? Else they would have put it in the backyard. 
I, I don't know. I, I'd have to look at it, but maybe there, for whatever reason, there was a hunk of ledge back there, or there just wasn't enough room, and there was more room in the front. They may have said, you know, if there was more room, or the other thing is, they were trying to get away from that well that's in the property. You know, well, my, like I said, my well's in my driveway. Um, but it, it would have been for my, for the engineering of my property, it would have been more conducive to put it up back because my leaching fields or whatever up the hill. But my lot, my well itself is 15 feet from this lot line. So. I, where are they proposing to put the septic because they're going to put it 15 feet away from my well? What, what's your address again? 11. 11 is early. Is so there, is what, what I'll do is I'll look it up and I'll figure out. Is there a minimum amount of land for a new building? I thought it was 1.6. I'll do it with a new lot. It's going to be a good point. If you were to take a 30 acres and make a subdivision. Oh, no, we're getting, the camera's not going to pick this up. Let's just do one at a time. Let them finish first. Now that you mentioned it, I can definitely see it, you know, but I didn't think of that. Literally, going there somewhere, that place is you walking a foot up from the water. You go to the back of that lot, you'd be ankle deep in water. It is definitely lower, and he's correct on the drainage. But to, to, to answer you, if you had 30 acres, you were dividing it up, we'd have to divide it to, to uh, what's it, 1.68 or something, yeah. lots or something like Seven, that? 1.7. And um, But the, like, say, before the 1.7 went in, it used to be three quarters of an acre in Lakeville. So if there's an old subdivision with a three quarter acre lot, it still can be nitrogen loading because it's big enough to have multiple bedrooms on it because it's, it's still three quarters mm -hmm. of an acre. So it has over the 30,000 square feet. 10,000, what's that, an eighth of an acre? 10,000 10, square feet of bedroom you're supposed to have for yeah, nitrogen so, loading. For one bedroom. So, so in those kind of lots, so the lots that got, are in there are meant to, to do all the lots like that and, and say, well, just because you didn't build it before the lot change, that's not worthless. Say you bought it and you were gonna hold it for your kid and the lots changed before he was old enough and now, oh, my lot's worthless. But when the when Clark Shores was built, it was a whole separate. Again, we never had five thousand square foot lots anywhere else in Lakeville. They were only allowed down there because of seasonal. It never became that big of an issue because there was no water, so nobody could do anymore. But then when DEP started letting run these water lines down, I mean they're on camera. Watch some of the old meetings. You can go online. We talked about this years ago that what they were doing and all the stuff that we wanted to put in there, and they didn't adopt any of it. And, and this is exactly what we saw. Oh, I did. I, I don't think they were here, but I was there. And this is exactly the kind of stuff we saw coming. And and DP just went right around us because they public water supplies, they permit them, not us. There's not just one well near that lot. It's me, Kenny, and right across the street is one pilot. And yeah. they have a well right there also. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. They have somebody living in town like Yeah, so yeah. there's this three it's just a different world. You know, it's like a triangle of wells right there. And, and the size of the lot, it's, it's like, like Kenny said, it's gonna the water's gonna flood my basement. Uh, yeah, I can tell you right now, I got a dirt basement still in my house, and, uh, and and if we get a bad enough storm, you go in there, there's definitely there's definitely groundwater moisture in that level. So like I just I just couldn't I was just couldn't imagine trying to put the septic in the house and to see what would happen to the groundwater at that point would be. I mean, short of putting culvert straight through that property and somebody else's backyard, I don't see how else you'd be able to divert that, that much water that goes down in the storm. I got a ring camera. I can bring a video for you guys. I go right at it. Yeah. It's on my driveway. And like you can see, it's just a flood right so in the ground. Right in the ground. Yeah. <coughs> All right. All right, I think that's a, enough for that. What, for that uh, since uh, it's just so for we'll discussion just, purposes. Yeah, but okay. I think we, where are we leaning for the discussion to answer his question? What are we? Um, well, I think that specific question would go to DEP, but we still, if it's really like the low spot of the whole neighborhood and where the drainage has been going, that still falls under us and that would be a whole separate issue. Um, and that would be have, something we'd have to look at separately. But I mean, to get this question answered, I th I just say sentence, wait for DEP to give it an answer and see what they say. If you got to wait for DEP, we would have to ask for a continuance from the applicant to Given, I don't know how much time it was, so we have to stop the clock on that. Because otherwise, you. I have thought to... that I thought this wasn't a formal. Yeah, this was just a discussion. But this has been submitted for approval. Is that what you're saying? Correct. So we only have so many days to approve this because this was submitted. Right. So oh, we have night, to. All night they've been we've been saying that it's just an informal well, discussion. Because it does say discussion on the agenda. It, yeah. It but is a discussion. Is but, but uh, once they submitted it from that day, we have so many days to do it. And if DEP does not get back to us in that time, then it would get approved. So we would ask. Do we them. have another meeting before that time comes up? 
Well, I don't know when DEP is going to get back to us. No, well, what, do we have another meeting before the clock runs out on that plan? We're, if you're interpreting it that way. September 13th was when this was received. Mm -hmm. How many days is it? 45. Is it 45? Or like? 30 or 45. So you would, yeah. um, I can't remember how many days it is. So you would have, it's 45 days. So yeah, it was sub submitted September 13th. Is that what it was? <laughs> I'm not sure. September 13th. That's what it's so it's almost 30 right now. So if, if DEP does not get back to us, if we don't have a meeting, that's why I would ask for a continuance now to, to stop the clock. And then, like I said, when DEP gets back to us, we can continue it. But you open that yeah, no, absolutely. Um, is there any way I can be CC'd on the email that was sent to DEP? Uh, yeah. So I can see that. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That's all public record. Yeah. You can get that. Yeah. Thank you. So we're going to make a motion to continue yeah i make a motion to continue the discussion on seven azalea street of the nitrogen loading uh, with the units consulting engineers to uh, wait for dep to get back to us on the definition um, under nitrogen loading limitations i think we still got to set a date you want to say uh, 30 days or something just in case we don't make the next meeting <coughs> Okay. Well, we'll continue I don't think and, we can just do it indefinitely because if DEP never answers well, us, then we'll continue to the next meeting and then discuss it on that date. Yeah, you can continue, and then if if it's not there, we would have to continue it again. Okay. What is that date of the next meeting? Two weeks from tonight. What's today's date? The fifth. It's in November nineteenth. Um, is it October nineteenth? Okay. Yep. Yeah. To yeah. Continue. So just make sure, even if nothing else comes in, don't send out a thing saying we'll cancel on it tonight because. We we'll still got a meet about this. There, there, there's definitely a meeting on October 19th because we have other stuff on it. Okay. So. Okay. So continuing 7 Azalea Street to October 19th, 2022. I'll second that. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, um, yeah. Thank you. 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 If your wells were affected, you would have been notified for the plan, the way the plan is done. The way it's laid out. The way it's laid out. If you're, if you're wells were oh, like yeah. If so your wells were affected, you're you would, by law, you have to be notified. Right. And if you weren't notified, then your well's not affected by it. So if it's less than 100, get notified. I think yours are like 102, 105. So it's close. So From it's, where they appointed it? Yeah. What's the frontage on that lot? I thought it was like 50 feet. My well's only like 20 feet off my property. It's got to like fall in. It's the very bad left the side, point. probably from where you're. For the other side, I like can look at it. Wait, can I give me a plan? Yeah. I mean, I, listen, we don't know. Lots of 100 feet wide. It's I'll 100 by 103 feet. I'll come back to the yeah. It's just, you can't have one just all open. Oh, yeah, you're, you're, you're right here. Right here. I have, yeah. Watch the old meetings. Yeah. I'm 100%. So, this is your radio. So, you are all the lots up there that are 10,000 feet each. Oh, yeah. So Jimmy, yeah. up on the yeah. corner, yeah. a couple yeah. lots yeah. down, yeah. a little yeah. over yeah. 6,000 yeah. feet. Like I said, you yeah. yeah. let yeah. them build it. Look at that street. Look at that street. And Jimmy's going to want to build. It's all just pouring. Steve's going to build two houses and leave. This is the other one. Yeah. But, but you could, though. So but you could. Basically yeah. there they, it's like just, like that, that, that was never the intent of that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it just it was, it was a summer community. Right. It, it, I literally yeah. signed some paperwork that I would not divide those laws. I didn't know what they were trying to do. So yeah. When yeah. I wanted to turn them into a year of residency. They put a footprint here for You know, I don't know the exact dates, 1987, 88. Yeah, so. That's the other so thing. I don't understand. Get to prove that I'm not sure. Sure. Uh, you would even dream of giving this guy to get to get the plans for the house for three bedroom houses. Well, 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 you probably at the time needed, needed to put a well in or something, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, they, so they made did a combine them to have a well so you'd have the density. I'm sure is what happened there. Which is why they said you couldn't divide them. But if you had never done that and just waited till now, in theory, so it's forty in the front. That could just build the house right over. There's not a camera. People just saw that. Back in the old days, when I was on camera, I could tell you what the water department is is in bankrupt. The only thing is the question is the nitrogen loading. Who knows? Oh, oh, yeah. I'm telling you right now, the whole lot is underwater. Most times. Separated that lot from the yeah. yeah. Just yeah. to sell it to the people together. Yeah. That I don't know. You know what I mean? It's a road. 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 It's a road.
and they stop going uphill once you go the other way. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. It's just the neighborhoods changed so much in 35 years. Every house is still alive. Six, eight, eight people. We still have a lot of things on the agenda. Yeah, we're still continuing. We're still on TV. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for You're welcome. Hi, Chris. All right, next on the agenda is betterment loan approval for review and approval for 7 Charbonneau Ave. Hey, pull up those old meetings someday and, and uh, email the video link to DEP when I said this is exactly what was going to happen down there. <laughs> <laughs> if they let them put those wells in. Ed, did we all set with us 7 Charbonneau Ave? Yeah, 7 Charbonneau is to the betterment. Um, everything's here. Everything is in order. I'm good. Bob? Good. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Make a motion to approve the betterment loan approval for 7 Charbonneau Ave in the amount of $29,547.60. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, that's not agenda at all. Is that the one to sign in that one? Uh, next thing agenda is approve board health meeting minutes for August 3rd, 2022. I'm good with them. I'm good too. Well, I'll make a motion we approve the meetings minute meeting from August 3rd, 2022. That's tight. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next thing agenda is continued discussion on 43 Main Street. Do we have anything new there, Ed? Um, we do not have anything new. And um, do you want to, guys, do you want to keep this on the agenda for every meeting, or should we um, just bring it up if something happens? Is there anything? I haven't heard anything recently. I mean, besides, I mean, there was a lawyer hired, but then I heard they appealed too. So I don't know. Should we continue this or? Yeah, I don't know what's happening either. I we mean, drop it for now and wait for something to come up. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing before us for it. Yeah, so. So I, I guess we can just. anything more from the EP about the. No. The I don't know what's happening. Nothing. No. I don't know. They, they mean, Derek, you that. asked about this too. So is, right. has your questions been answered? <clears throat> Uh, no. You not asked really. some questions, yeah. Uh, you did ask some questions on the solid waste, and um, I did not follow up on that, sorry. If the wells have been getting tested, if they inspected the property. Since the cleanup thing, when the permit expired for the cleanup thing, when it was issued. Uh, we EP don't have access to the any, modern wells. Right. No, so we, there's nothing we can do there. It's, it's totally in DEP's hands. Uh, I, I, can, I can check up on the solid waste part of it. I, I just forgot. Sorry. Uh, well, yeah. Anything you hear back as far as I mean, anything, give us an answer. I mean, forward it to us so that we have. Yeah, we just add, put it on the agenda. So we okay. hear yeah. something, so we have to keep it on. I'm, I'm for that. Yeah. So when yeah, you're... actually, that's even better. Okay. Because yeah. you'll know if you get something, and then you can. You say, get a reply, put it on the agenda. Yeah, it'll be we as long as I get it two days before, it'll be on the agenda. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll do that. Uh, next, the agenda is discuss regard discussion regarding proposed open space residential development. You guys got anything new on that? No, and I hear it's going forward on town meeting, and I haven't heard boo about it since the night we had the meeting. So, last selectors meeting, I don't know if you guys watched it. I didn't watch the meeting, but I did read the agenda, and there was discussion about potential warrant items, and I didn't see that. I don't think I saw that on there. I did oh. see the land on off of Holland Road in Freetown and between 140 and all that, um, this trying to change zoning to industrial for part of that. So I don't know if that's tied to this too. Um, but I was gonna mention that to you guys too, that yeah, that they were talking about more and stuff. I haven't seen an email yet about warrant review before they Can vote. So we at least have it ask uh, look into it again and send an email over to for the open space to see if, where they stand yeah if they're going forward if they're from my understanding where they stand was they were supposed to send us 
revisions based on our comments. Yeah, that's how that night we left it, and yeah, then I've yeah. never heard nothing. I got nothing, so I will. I can send them an email saying, okay, have, have you made any changes? If you haven't made any changes, um, you know. Ashley, anyway, can you find out what is going on the warrant and send it to us? Yeah, sure. If they have a decision yet on what they're putting on and what they're not going to put on? So that was just a discussion, right, about the warrant articles. Usually when they, the last couple of meetings, when it's ready and they're going to vote to say this is the warrant, Mm -hmm. they'll send out an email to yeah, all the fine. groups and says, hey, we're having a meeting to review the warrant. Right. You're invited. Type of. And they, with it, they send the warrant out. This is what we're looking at. Yeah. Um, but like I've said more than once, that if there's stuff on there that pertains to us, like when they did the, that other thing, right. you know, we shouldn't have to tune into a meeting to find out what's going on. It'd be nice to somebody to keep us in the loop ahead of time. So, so if Ed can do that for us, just so we can look at it ahead of time, and if there's anything we think pertains to us, reach out to the the people directly, so we're not having a four-hour discussion the night of the warrant review, so we can have conversations ahead of that. That is probably the right. better way to do that. Yeah. So I guess my recommendation would be to to send them and ask if if that is going forward, if they're still going forward with that. Yes. And have there been any changes to it? Has there been any changes? Year. We haven't been notified of anything. Right. So we'll probably keep that off next meeting then? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. hopefully they'll have some answers. Okay. Right, so I'll make a motion. We continue that for our next meeting. All uh, right. I don't think it's just on there. Um, oh, it's for discussion. discussion. It's for okay. discussion. So it's just, we're going to keep it um, on. We're not going to take that one off. Okay. Um, I hear it said. All right. Yeah. So next to the agenda is the discussion. Board of Health agent pending items. Uh, I do not have any. And then COVID-19 in West Nile and... Uh, COVID-19, um, cases are starting to tick up some. Um, it's it's just that time of year, it gets cold and people get inside. Um, it really starts to spike usually after the, uh, we, the holidays and they get together, the Halloween and um, Thanksgiving and stuff. But Well, the schools had a ton of it. I was here and there was like a hundred and something kids a day for a while. It went through the, through the schools like wildfire. Yeah, no, and, and we were kind of expecting that. And that's part of why it's increased is because of the schools. But, um, you know, like it is increasing, but um, it's it's tough to measure it now because not yeah. many people are getting tested. Yeah, uh, nobody most goes and gets home testing. And um, we do have at home tests if any Lakeville residents need them. Just you can come to the Board of Health. They also have them at the library. They have them at the COA. Um, usually, just go in. There'll be a table there or something. Um, but we, and the Board of Health is just on a table. You know, we have to come to a window. We can just pick them up on the table. Um, but yeah, so they are increasing. Uh, but um, and they get the they get the specific more. shots now. They get the uh, variant specific ones. The new I got mine shot. Friday. Seven times the charm. I hope. What's that? The new bivalent one. <laughs> Hopefully, correct. It's supposed to be specific to Omicron, so it, it in the BA five or BA four or something right. or something. It, it'll so. help to prevent you from getting it rather than just keeping you out of the hospital. Yeah. The, the, the older ones just basically kept you out of the hospital. So. And I saw a show, and, and they're, they're, they're hopeful that, like, remember how it kept being new variants every few months, and we haven't had any new ones for a while? I was watching a show, and whether the guy's right or not, I think he was from Pfizer, but it said that, you know, because of the amount of people that have had it and the vaccines out there, so it's, you know, if we get to the point that it, you know, it's, it's like the flu, it slows down to like a different variant every year. I think that's what they're hoping the best case scenario is now going forward that, you know, that it doesn't change four times a year and you had to keep getting new shots all the time. So, which would be fine. I just don't recommend getting the new shot and your flu shot at the same time. Sounded like a good idea, but. Because they are doing it, correct? I've yeah, it turned out not I to be for me anyway. It wasn't a good idea either, so. Huh? <laughs> But uh, it, it is good to get your flu shot because um, this is expected to be a bad flu year. So it is, oh, yeah. it's a good point to try to, no, maybe not at the same time, but definitely. Yeah, not at the same time, I don't think, but. Um, West Nile, uh, there's been five cases of West Nile human cases, um, both in Suffolk and Middlesex County. Um, there have been some mosquitoes tested uh, in this area, but no human cases in, in, in this area. 
And at this point, um, we're probably going to freeze within the next couple of weeks. So we're in pretty good shape. Uh, no cases of Tripoli. Nice. Okay. Anything new, old, or announcements? I'm good. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.